Carly and I got this. Besides, they're ripping off our ideas, not yours. I'm a big part of iCarly, too. Yeah, well, I've never heard Totally Terry say, In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> you don't say the one. Fredward Benson is the tech expert of the iCarly crew, and his growth as a character is rivaled by none. Throughout the show's run, we see Freddy go from being a weak, timid, and gullible nerd to a strong, self-assured, and cunning nerd. The only reason you pinned me down like that was because I wasn't ready. Are you ready now? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Can we please not tell anyone about this? Same time the voice got lower. You see what you did? You killed Fred! Ah! You deserve this! <laughs> they probably do a lot of sit-ups. And though a lot of these changes are definitely for the best, considering the company he keeps, people tend to forget that Freddy also becomes a bit of a jerk as the series progresses. But what caused this? What fateful folly caused Freddy's fervor to fall into a frivolous fury? Frantically foolish friends or fading feelings from fatherlessness? Finally, it's time to Janealicize Freddy. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. This is amazing. Someone finally friended you? <laughs> Control Freddy. Bad thoughts lead to bad actions. One of Freddy's most consistent traits has got to be his tech skills. Working full-time as iCarly's editor, cinematographer, key grip, visual effects designer, and the list goes on. But his talents aren't exclusive to film. Freddy's shown himself to be quite capable at building model trains, playing games like World of Warlords, and fencing, a skill he may have inherited from his mother's side of the family. What? Your great-grandfather, long before you were born, he led a troop called the Fence and Bensons. He became obsessed with it. He forced my father to fence, and later, my father made me. <laughs> Fencing's in our blood, Freddy, and I never wanted you to become obsessed. Ah! Careful, Sam, those are sharp. Starbies! You girls want a little taste of a Fence and Benson? <laughs> It should be noted that while fencing, Freddy uses his right hand, but while writing, he uses his left hand, meaning he's ambidextrous. Another interesting ability of Freddy's is his multilingualism. In I Hate Sam's New Boyfriend, we learn that he's taking a French class, but for some strange reason, Freddy has numerous outbursts in Spanish. Buenos dias, muchachalatas. I'll be done as soon as I glue on this last piece. You guys want to see? Don't yeah. Lose though. Okay. This. <laughs> oh, cabeza. No. Even stranger is that sometimes his outbursts aren't actually Spanish. They're just supposed to sound Spanish. I came with a big box of long yellow flex tubes, which I can attach to these and then run the cool air all throughout the apartment. Nice. Nice. A prevailing theory among fans is that Freddy's gratuitous Spanish has something to do with this line. As soon as Freddy was old enough to toddle, I had a locator tip put in his head by a questionable doctor in Venezuela. You chipped Freddy? Oh, I chipped him because I love him. The theory suggests that either through malfunction or a side effect, the chip tampers with Freddy's brain causing him to speak Spanish randomly, and that this wouldn't have happened if his mom hadn't put the chip in him. You know, come to think of it, a lot of Freddy's personality traits, both good and bad, can be attributed to how overbearing his mother is. On one hand, she's the reason for Freddy's prim and proper mannerisms, as well as his personal hygiene. But her constant helicoptering over Freddy may also be the reason for him slowly becoming more fed up with everyone.
Pair this with the constant bullying he receives from his so-called friend Sam Puckett and the initial rejection and manipulation from his friend Carly Shay, and we're left with the tragic story of how an innocent kid who desperately wants to be a bad boy so people will stop looking down on him transforms into a self-confident but short-tempered man in the final season. Don't believe me? After getting a job at the Pear Store in the episode appropriately titled I Pear Store, we witness firsthand how easily frustrated Freddy can get. I want a blue one. Well, don't you want to know about the speed and how much memory it has? And I want a blue one. Well, we'll get you a blue one. What if I want to do email? I just said this one's good for email. Can I talk to the blonde sales girl? Sam, get over here and help this moron. Lady, you can pick up your new pair book right over there at that counter. I just want to buy some earbuds. But you said you wanted a blue pair book. Now I just want earbuds. Do they come in blue? Yes. As someone who used to work in retail, believe me, I understand Freddy's frustration. However, that doesn't justify his anger towards Sam after she gets a job at the very same store. Instead of just accepting that his boss only cares about sales and not his actual skills, he makes a big scene out of it. I gave Sam a promotion. What? Sam's my boss now? Yep. I am a computer expert. I know so much. She is lazy and a criminal and a nuisance and she has terrible table manners. And you don't deserve to have me work here. Okay, you're fired. <laughs> You know what, I take it back. If you've ever worked in retail, I'm sure you've had one of these days. And if you haven't had one of these days, it's cause you're Sam. If you need to vent, feel free to in the comments down below. That is, if YouTube doesn't remove these comments like they did last time. Speaking of overbearing mothers, <laughs> get it? May I come in? Whoops, already in. Ready, come on, it's time for our class. Mom signed us up for mother-son synchronized swimming classes. Mom. I don't have a swimsuit. Which is why I just stopped at Walmart and bought you this. At home, Freddy lives with his overbearing, overemotional, and overprotective mother, Marissa Benson. It should be noted that early in the series, Freddy's mom showed a number of symptoms commonly associated with obsessive compulsive disorder. Excessive hygiene, excessive organizing, repeating words or phrases, and a distinctive fear of losing control. But as the series goes on, Marissa's need for control over Freddy becomes downright unhealthy. Almost as if she doesn't want Freddy to socialize with anyone but her. She chooses his food, she enrolls them in activities together, she even picks his bedtime. But the big question on everyone's mind is, why? Well, personally, I think it may have something to do with Freddy's dad. What's up with Sally Sunshine? <laughs> She's been dating a new guy. Well, I don't see how a boy could make a girl that happy. Sure, because you haven't had a date since Seinfeld got cancelled. We know that Freddy's mom is single, but Freddy's dad has never been mentioned at all. The closest we've ever gotten is an early draft of the script for the episode I Speed Date. Sorry it's so blurry. According to multiple sources, Freddy's dad's name is, or at least would have been, Leonard Benson. Apart from that, his reason for leaving Freddy and his mother remains unclear. Did he leave them because of his mother's overbearing nature? Was he just a deadbeat dad? Did he cheat on her? Did she cheat on him? Or did he pass away? Regardless of which answer we choose, they all lend themselves well to the idea that maybe Freddy's mom holds on to him so tightly because he's all she has left. Let's not forget that Freddy's an only child. Whatever happened to Freddy's dad must have left Freddy's mom in a catastrophic condition, so any traces of an overzealous parent that may have been there initially were immediately dialed up to their extreme. She doesn't want to let go of Freddy because he's her everything, which is why when he moves out of the house in I Move Out, she has a panic attack and becomes even more unstable than usual. Now, apparently in the iCarly Revival series, we'll learn about Freddy's stepdaughter, Millicent. Which means we'll probably have to update some videos, huh? Who knows, I might even team up with my dear friend, Fitoria, so we can both analyze the future of iCarly. 
Speaking of friends. I thought we talked about this. We can be buds, but you gotta get over this crush thing. I am over it, seriously. I'm in love with you, you just wanna be friends, and I'm totally cool living with that constant pain. <laughs> At the beginning of iCarly, one of Freddy's defining character traits is his crush on one of his best friends, Carly Shay. In I Saved Your Life, after Freddy pushes Carly out of the way of a taco truck, Carly becomes infatuated with him, and the two start dating. But after Sam points out that Carly's only interested in Freddy because he saved her and not because of any genuine romantic feelings she has for him, we get this exchange. Freddy. Okay. You know how you've always said you like me, but that you don't like me that way. Yeah, but that was before, before I saved your life. But I love you. Love what I did. You love that I risked my life to save yours, but I don't think you're in love with me. Notice how Freddy's the one to call it off. If he was a manipulative person, he probably would have kept this relationship going, but he makes it clear that he only wants Carly if she genuinely loves him. As for his other friends, there's Carly's big brother, Spencer, who Freddy probably sees as his own big brother. They share the same interest in Galaxy Wars and World of Warlocks. Then there's Gibby. Then there's Sam, who regularly teases and abuses Freddy, only to end up dating him. I've already made a whole video on why their relationship doesn't work, so be sure to check it out. I'll leave a link down below. But one thing I didn't mention in that video is how Freddy seems to still have feelings for Sam. Interesting that even though the two have been through hell together, Freddy still has feelings for her, especially considering all the other girls he's dated at this point. Despite being the quote unquote nerd, he's attracted numerous girls. Valerie from I Will Date Freddy, Shannon Mitchell from I Win a Date, Melanie Puckett from I Twin, Magic Malika, Jamie, and Ariana in I Speed Date, Leslie in I Was a Pageant Girl, Gibby's cousin Sabrina Gibson in I Beat the Heat, Patrice and three girls from Ridgeway in I Pity the Neville, and surprisingly enough, in I Start a Fan War, Freddy has the most fangirls. Gee, I wonder who he could be taking notes from. Freddie Benson has always been a cool character to me because in many ways he inspired me to become a video editor. It's also really cool to see how much development he goes through considering he's in a show where character development isn't really a priority. The iCarly revival series is just around the corner, so let's see what happens to Freddy from here on out. It'll be really cool to see how much his tech skills improve over time and how much of a following iCarly has after all these years. Speaking of following, be sure to follow me on my social medias, but especially Twitch if you want to see me live stream. While you're at it, be sure to follow the Junior and Marcus Talk podcast, where we talk about movies, TV shows, and whatever you want us to talk about. If you're already a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe to my backup channel, Janiac Junior, in case anything bad happens to this one. And finally, please check out the merchandise. Every purchase supports this channel. Now this is the part of the video where most people click away, so for those of you who actually stayed, Here's another Amazon card. See, there's a reason to stick around. Remember that these only work on Canadian accounts. Unfortunately, when you live in a specific region, these get region locked. But if you have an account on Amazon.ca, this gift card will work for you, but it will only work if you're the first person to use it. So here we go. Here's proof it hasn't been opened yet. Here we go. I'm gonna open it right in front of you. $25 Amazon.ca gift card. Here we go. And there you have it. Tell me if you're the one who got the card in the comments down below. While you're at it, let me know what iCarly character you'd like me to talk about next. Until then, I'll leave you with this. Damn it.